Hello and welcome. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to this session. This is about your future career in marketing. You're listening to Imran Farooq. And my big promise to you is that I will be sharing things with you that will have a significant impact in planning for your future career pathway in marketing. So in preparation for this webinar, if you've got any distractions around you, just take the time now to switch off your mobile phone or put it on silent. If you're on a laptop right now, maybe just uh, switch off notifications or close your emails down just for this uh, session so you can focus and take advantage of what I am going to share with you. Um, if you have a pen and a piece of paper to hand, feel free to take notes. And whilst I'm presenting, I'm going through the slides, look for the one or a handful of things that you can take from this presentation and take action on straight away. There are four sections to this presentation. The first one is looking at getting clarity on your goals and your future career. Second one is to zone in on looking at what are the things that are barriers, potential barriers stopping you from hitting your goals. Part three will share some practical steps and lastly, we'll look at how you can get qualified with a Chartered Institute of Marketing qualification. And we'll look at the different options available. So let's get started on the first section. We all have dreams. We all want to believe that deep down inside ourselves that we have a special gift, that we can make a difference. We can touch others in a special way. And we can make the world a better place. At some point in our lives, we, we've all had the vision for the quality of life that we desire and potentially deserve. But for many of us, them dreams just disappear or we get frustrated or things that are happening in the world has a major impact. And we no longer, at some point, give up sometimes the effort to try to accomplish them. In difficult times, some of us can lose that sense of certainty and also sometimes lose our creativity and that winning edge. However, we should really get obsessive about restoring your dreams, making them real, remembering them, and regaining the power to drive towards them. Figuring out what you can do today that will make a big difference for tomorrow and shaping your potential destiny. Figuring out how you can expand, learn, grow. Figure out how you can share the knowledge with others in an enjoyable and meaningful way. If you go out and study high achievers, you'll find that simply they have bigger dreams, bigger goals. With, with this in mind, high achievers see the world from a very different perspective. They see things where amazing things can happen, where lives can be improved, where technology can change the way of life where resources in the world can be used differently, where interesting partnerships can be formed. On the other hand, if goals are too low or if they're limited, it's easy to actually miss them. Or with limited choices, it is easy to disconnect yourself from what you truly want and all you're doing is compromising. If you're somebody who already has a clear vision, a clear goal, a clear dream, it's important to not let anybody talk you out of it. There are many elements to making dreams happen. Being very clear on your goals, consistency, repetition, clear on your purpose, your emotional state, clear planning, being able to handle tension. And getting success on a larger scale is about getting a series on micro successes and micro failures over a period of years. For this presentation, I've only decided to focus on one element, and that is goals. And the reason for that is, out of the thousands of marketers I've trained and mentored, I've always found that goals have always been developed at a very superficial level. And a lot more depth is required to really add clarity and focus. To get to that deeper level, it's very powerful. You may have heard the saying, if you don't have a plan for your life, someone else does. 
So this deeper level of thinking is really important to come up with your own goals. An interesting exercise to think about, and there's no right or wrong answer to this, is the goals that you've got in your mind right now, or your ambitions, or where you'd like to be in five years time, how did they actually get there? There was something that must have happened or influenced you in the last year, in the last five years, it could be 10 years. There was a point at which you saw something or you experienced something that would have influenced you on the way you think now and the way you think in the future, your future ambitions, your future goals. Where did the original thinking that got you there stem from? It's an interesting reflection to do. Okay, so why am I so obsessed about delivering an entire presentation to you about goals? This is one of the reasons. Your eyes and ears only see and hear what your brain tells them. Inside your brain, there is something called the reticular activating system. What it basically is, is a filter which allows your brain to focus. You've experienced this in action. For example, if you decided to buy a specific car or an item of clothing, all of a sudden you started noticing that item of clothing and that car everywhere. If you're in a very busy place, in a coffee shop or a meeting, and somebody a couple of tables away is talking about an interesting topic that is relevant to you, all of a sudden you start picking everything up word for word. If you were in a busy place, in a busy airport, where there's lots of noises and things happening around you, if your name got called out, you would hear it straight away. So this filter is powerful, and it's important to get it to a point where it works for you. So this is happening in your brain all the time. It's nothing new, there's a lot of science behind this. But the thing I want to point out is that there are thousands of thoughts that are going in and out of your brain all the time. However, there's some thoughts that become thicker. So if you think about threads of information in your brain, some of them will get thicker depending on what you attach to it and depending on how much you think about it. So for example, if you're thinking about frustrations and negativity and things you're worried about, as a result of this focus, that's all you will see. The challenge we have as marketers in the world ahead, some marketers are going to be very successful, some marketers are going to struggle. And it's important to be in a position where you see the opportunities. Some of these opportunities already exist around you. Goals need to be designed to catapult you into action. If you're getting bored with life, if you don't want to get up every morning with a burning desire to do things, then it's likely your goals are not clear, you don't have the right goals, or maybe you don't have enough goals. There are many different types of goals. I'm going to cover some of these in the next part of my presentation. But for this bit, what are breakthrough goals? Some goals are just incremental goals, which are okay, they're good, it's good to make progress. But then some goals which are these breakthroughs. A breakthrough would give you a quantum leap in your career. So it's not about incremental improvements in your life. So a breakthrough is a moment of transformation. It could bring you new opportunities, you could be getting in front of the right people, it's an activity, it could be a relationship, it could be a group, it could be a client. Whatever you're involved in, it's a leap to a higher level. It's good to get an understanding of what a breakthrough goal looks like for you. Authors Jim Collins and Jerry Porras talk about and have coined the term BHAGs, Big Hairy Audacious Goals. And they set out on a mission to look at companies who have survived hundreds, hundreds of years, companies that have gone from good to great. So they've done a lot of research and they found that these organizations had these BHAGs. It's a good concept to apply to your personal development. And the reason for that is BHAGs are goals that are so big that they look scary. So can you have goals 
for your personal query development that look scary. The power of setting a BHAG is when you look at this type of goal, is something that will throw you out of your comfort zone. It's something that will get you thinking differently. Another variation of that is MTP, a massive transformational purpose. Some of the largest companies in the world, who have in the digital world that have grown so fast, have set out to change the world. And the focus of these types of goals is to go out and really ask how do you add more value to your target audiences? How do you add value to your customers? And we're talking about adding so much value that's more than any of your competitors. If you want to generate a million pounds worth of revenue, go and help a million people. So my BHAG is to help 70,000 marketers succeed by 2025. Success is getting breakthroughs, success is transformation. And we're doing this through education, mentoring, coaching. And these marketers could be leaders, professionals, freelancers, entrepreneurs, consultants. I've been helping marketers for the last 20 years and we're on an interesting journey. And in fact, I was there when the dot-com bubble burst, the economy was going through tough times. And in fact, it was times when marketers were the first to be made redundant. And then we've been through a time where marketing has been growing from where it was from the handful of job titles that was 10 to 15 years back to the thousands and thousands of brand new roles that have been created in marketing. There's interesting times ahead because we have come full circle and I think there's a new challenge ahead for marketers. I've played many roles in educating marketers. Um, I've been pioneering qualifications in marketing and digital marketing. I head up an organization called MMT Learning, which is a joint venture company with the Manchester Metropolitan University. It's an accredited study center for the Chartered Institute of Marketing. We deliver qualifications at level four, level six, level seven, and also a master's in digital marketing, which was a world's first in partnership with the Manchester Metropolitan University. I also like to go hands-on in digital marketing, so I've helped many organizations consulting on automation, digital marketing, which in turn has generated millions and millions of pounds worth of revenue for the businesses I've worked on. Feel free to connect to me. I'm open to helping you on your journey. If you need somebody to bounce your ideas off or help with your CV or your career ahead, feel free to ping me a message. I'm always happy to chat and jump on a call with you. My purpose and passion is to help marketers. And we've learned so much across the last 20 years and we're keen to pass this wisdom on to the next generation of marketers. Okay, so let's jump into the next part of the presentation. Let's have a look at some practical steps that you can take to get clarity and set your goals. There's a magic of taking a pen to a piece of paper. And unfortunately, in the digital world we live in today, we've kind of lost it. So start writing things down. You could have a book which is dedicated towards your goals. And it doesn't have to be a linear list. You can get creative, add pictures, words, different phrases, cut things out, put visuals in there. And as your goals and desires evolve, simply add as you're going along. This should be accessible. Uh, so whether it's before you're going to sleep at night, whether you're waking up in the morning. And it's just an opportunity just to capture them thoughts. Them thoughts that are in your subconscious mind the thoughts that are generated in your subconscious. Because when your conscious mind kicks in, you will start forgetting about them thoughts. And some of your genius ideas will come at different moments in time throughout the day, throughout the week. So get them captured so it allows you to develop the thinking around it. The focus of this is on you. The focus of this is to get attention and direct your brain. You probably spend lots of time planning your holidays, planning other things, helping other organizations meet their goals, meet their marketing campaigns, meet other organizational objectives. But this activity is diverting attention to you and your future. There are two future scoping exercises that you can do to help you get some clarity. So the first one is something that uh, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, has done many times uh, when he is planning his goals, his future. And this exercise, uh, first exercise is 
visualizing yourself or projecting yourself into the future. I mean, it's also called the rocking chair exercise. But ba the basis premise of this exercise is to project yourself 10 years into the future and imagine yourself 10 years older than what you are now. Or imagine yourself as an 85 year old sitting in your rocking chair. And whilst you're thinking, um, and if you don't change your life, if you just keep living the way you are now, where are you going to end up? What are the things that you're going to be thinking about that you are going to regret not doing in your life? So put yourself there. And then after you've done that exercise, you come out of it and then you list all the things that you would have regretted that you should have done in your life. I do this exercise many times. I find it really helpful. It's better to look forward than to look back and say, right, I wish I had done that five years ago, or instead of looking backwards and having regrets. This is actually a big opportunity for you to really think going forward and not to have a list of regrets in 10 years' time. The other parallel exercise, again, I would recommend, I've done it many times myself, is to uh, take a piece of paper and list a 24-hour clock in one column on the left-hand side and start writing down what your perfect future day looks like. What are you doing at each hour of the day? What activity are you doing? Where are you living? What's your environment? What work are you doing? What's your lifestyle choices? So when you're mapping out your goals, you have to go deep. And I've mentioned this before, the detail is important to direct your brain. So for example, if you're thinking about your ideal job, the detail that you want to put on there could include where are you working? What are you doing? Who are you working with? What kind of clients and customers do you have? What are you getting paid? If you get this role, what does it mean to you? Let's take another goal as an example, which might be related to your body and your physical health. Are you looking to be free of all diseases? Are you looking to get pain free? Do you need flexibility and strength? What's the balance of exercise? Eating good food, drinking lots of water. How much do you weigh? Are you looking to be more relaxed, have more energy? And any of these goals that you're coming up with need detail and measurement. If you're programming yourself with generic goals, like I want to earn more salary, I want to earn more income. If you got paid an extra £10 per month, technically that you've achieved that goal, but it's probably not what you were thinking of. I want to share a model with you that will help you develop a focus and goals at different levels. And this is a model by author David Allen. He's one of the world's most influential thinkers on productivity. And he came up with this model, Horizons of Focus, where he uses the analogy of an aeroplane flying at different levels. He talks about this in his groundbreaking book, GTD model, which he came up with, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity. So how can this help you? Let's have a look at the first level, level five, 50,000 foot. So at this level, you're planning your vision, your why, your purpose. What is the reason you're doing what you're doing right now? This is the thing that you would find most fulfilling. It's what inspires you. Or if you look at the view of the ancient Greeks, start with the end in mind. This could also include the standards that you need to meet for success, the behaviors you need to have. Level four is building on that further. So you're thinking about what the vision will look like, what will it sound like, what will it feel like? These characteristics with the vision being fulfilled with outstanding implementation. The goals that you are setting at these two levels are goals that you would look at achieving five to 10 years down the line. Level three is more related to your next career move. So it's something that is maybe 12 to 24 months down the line. If you're working your way up the marketing career ladder, what's your next move? What's the next role that you want to go into? And whatever goal you come up with at this level, it should still be in alignment with levels four and five. Level two is about keeping the engines running. So you're going to have multiple goals at this level. 
you've got more than just career goals. You'll have other goals related to your family, health, and many other things. So there's many balls to juggle in the air. And a challenge to everyone in keeping this work-life balance. And finally, we have the ground level, the runway, and level one. So the runway is about the current visible tasks that you've got, your daily goals, your micro goals that you need to achieve, the phone calls you need to make, the meetings that you need to set up, the emails that you need to send. And then level one is the campaigns that you need to do, the projects that you need to complete. So the difference is one of them is daily and the other one, which is projects, could be three months, six months, up to one year. So this is a great model to apply to your goals, to get your goals into alignment. For example, you could be busy doing your day-to-day -day work and it might be out of alignment. And a lot of people in their life discover that they've been working every day for a number of years. And at the end of it, they've not really got anywhere close to achieving where they want to be. So once you've got your goals written down in a high level of detail, here are some activities that you could think about doing. Firstly, your most important goal should be visible and should be placed on items around you that are going to remind you of that goal. So for example, it could be placed in your wallet. So every time you open your wallet, you see the goal. It could be placed as a picture on your phone, on your home screen. It could be a screensaver, it could be pinned up to, on your wall. Any location that can act as a reminder. Having the discipline to read your goals out loud is important because it allows your brain to connect the dots. Or you could go one step further when you've finished writing down your goals. You could start sharing that out with immediate friends, family or beyond the groups you work with. And also what you'll find is that sharing your goals, sharing your BHAGs, your vision, your purpose will actually have a very interesting response. It will attract the right people to work with you and it is a good path to becoming a magnet and an influencer and inspiring the people around you. There's many tools you can use to map out your goals and productivity actions. These are offline tools and online tools. I am a fan of vision boards if you're doing on offline activity and having a goals book. If you're going online, there's many tools. I like using Trello. And if you've got your goals mapped out, I'm happy to share my experiences and share how I've set up Trello for my goals and productivity. Okay, let's move on to part three. This section is about identifying and removing barriers. This is an essential topic. In my experience of mentoring and coaching many marketers, what I found is that there are marketers who have the right skill set, the right level of experience, but for some reason they're not progressing to reach their goals. So therefore the challenges are more internal. So it's not about doing more to achieve your goals or finding different ways to achieve your goals. It's about removing barriers that are stopping you from reaching your goals. And I'm going to look at some of them in this section. It's important for you to think and reflect. Are these barriers stopping you from progressing? So before I look at them barriers, or we could even call them fears, it's important to understand tension. Tension is important. If it's non-existent, you won't have the drive to progress and reach higher goals. If there's too much tension, then it will stress you out, frustrate you, and you'll fall back. Every time you move into a new situation or a new scenario or progress into the next level, you will always get a level of new tension. Those that master tension, those that understand it, will use that tension to progress, will turn that tension into energy will have the ability to control the emotional roller coaster ride. This is a wider topic, maybe for another presentation, but at this stage I just wanted to make you aware, as we've been discussing about progressing, reaching higher goals, and it's important to look at how 
you become a master. And this is a general life skill. As you get older, you'll have to figure out how you manage tension in all aspects of life. Okay, let's have a look at the top seven fears, roadblocks, barriers, which can stop you from progressing, which can stop you from hitting your goals. So the first one is something to do with yourself. It's the way you look, not having the right body or the right vitality. This can be common amongst middle-aged people and also a new generation because we're living in the world of video blogging and a very visual world. So there's a very common mindset that you should look a certain way. Some people are very worried about this when they are thinking about expanding their influence. Rejection is another potential barrier, especially if you know that if you pursue a specific goal and you know people would reject you for following that goal. So there's some strength and energy required for you to just to pursue with it and face people rejecting that goal around you. Another one linked very close to that is the fear of losing respect. So this is common amongst people who are moving into leadership positions or you're in a leadership position and you're trying to inspire the people around you. It could be people who are very close to you, loved ones, family members, teams. The challenge is as you're progressing higher and higher and achieving higher goals, the environment that you end up in is an environment where some people will respect you, some people won't. And everyone in leadership positions experiences this. The next one is a big one. I see this over and over again with many marketers, many professionals and mentoring and coaching. And it's having the fear of failure. For the people who stop and don't progress, if you don't try, that's actually a 100% failure rate. And it's an interesting one to really succeed at higher levels. You have to become comfortable with failing. Anyone who has experienced success on a huge scale will tell you that their success is based on a series of failures that got them there. This one will definitely test your toughness, your mental toughness. How engaged are you in achieving this goal? How focused are you? How driven are you? The next one is having the fear of success. So this does occur in many people. And as you progress and hit your next level goal, this is a concern which people may have because when they get to the next level, they have to behave in a certain way. They have to act in a certain way. They have to maintain another standard. Or in some cases, they feel as though they don't deserve the success. That success should be given to other people around them, other family members. So we see many cases of very successful people who tend to self-sabotage themselves and they drop back from their success. And the best thing you can do in these scenarios is become even more successful so you can help others and lead others. The next one is the fear of not being smart enough. So maybe you're in positions where you're thinking you're not smart enough to be doing that role. Or maybe you feel as though you don't have the right credentials or the right background, the right education. I mean, this is an area where Chartered Institute Marketing is very well positioned to help marketers not only just get the right level of knowledge, the right level of skills, learning knowledge which is transferable at different levels and different industries, and also giving you the right credentials on your CV. And you'll see it when you're doing a job search on different websites. When you compare all the different awarding bodies and marketing, you'll see that a lot of employers have a large amount of respect for the Chartered Institute of Marketing and having the qualifications on your CV. I think education is key to driving your income, driving your confidence, being able to walk in a room where you're the smartest marketer in the room. Education is an investment. It's an asset that you will see a return on. Some people struggle to progress because they feel that they're breaking some kind of moral or ethics or some kind of, or some kind of spiritual journey they're on. 
So these are DIFF values that some of you might have. These values carry a more higher level importance in your life, and it may be the center of your life. And in this case, if your spiritual self is not aligned with your career goals, you will fail in your career goals. And going forward, there's some thinking to be done to get an alignment between the two. It can be easily done, and it's very powerful when it happens. The last one is another interesting one, because I'm seeing more and more marketers break out of their 9-to-5 jobs and go freelance, become consultants. So there's a real challenge here around money, the fear of losing money or not making enough money. This is an area that requires attention. As well as it being a physical element, it's also a mindset element. We all have been brought up with a specific mindset around money. Some of it might be productive, and in a lot of cases, that mindset may actually become a big barrier for you to progress. Either way, you need to master your knowledge around money, income, different streams of income, understand your own spending. What is an asset? What is a liability? So on this slide, I've covered many barriers, many fears. So the purpose of this is not to get you more stressed out is to get yourselves into a position where you're thinking about these, where you're starting to think a bit more proactively, really identifying are some of these things stopping you from progressing. There are many tools and techniques out there to help you smash through these barriers. And again, you're welcome to give me a call, and I'm happy to share my insights in how you can break through some of these. Before wrapping up this section, I want you to imagine that some of your larger goals are like gardens. So if you were to look at your house or look down your street, everyone has different gardens. Some have put a lot of effort into them. Some have left them and they've got weeds in the gardens. So if you imagine some of these goals that you've got in the longer term, they need seeding. They will need water and different types of nourishment over the different seasons. And then at some point in the future, they're at a stage where they may become more dominant in your life. You may have other larger goals, which require a series of actions that need to take place over a period of time. Things that are aligned with your purpose and your passion, it's going to take time. You can't just jump off and say, right, I want to do that right now. There has to be a build-up. And as I mentioned before, Achieving your bigger goals is a series of micro successes, a series of micro failures, all added together over a period of time, is going to allow you to hit your dreams, hit your bigger goals. So just a quick recap of the first three sections of this presentation. In the first part, we talked about goals, the importance of having clarity and how it impacts your brain how it's important to get your brain working for you. In the second section, I went through a series of practical steps that you can take to get this level of higher clarity. And in the third section, we looked at different types of barriers that could be stopping you from progressing. Looking at the importance of potentially removing some of these barriers so it's easier for you to progress towards your goals. In the final part of this presentation, I want to talk to you about getting qualified in marketing and the various options available to you from the Chartered Institute of Marketing. If you are already studying or if this is not relevant to you, that's okay feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn. Here's my details. I'm open to helping you reviewing your CV, reviewing your LinkedIn profile, and giving you advice going forward on planning your future career in marketing. So if you were to look at the portfolio of CIM qualifications available to you, there's a series, there are different levels, and these levels are designed to coincide with where you are on your marketing journey. So some of you may be new marketers, some of you may have a few years experience in, some of you may be working towards management, some of you will be in leadership roles. So depending on what level you're at, there is a relevant CIM qualification. 
And also within here, there are specialist pathways, which I'll cover later. So if you look at levels three and four, there's a certificate in professional marketing, a certificate in professional digital marketing. These levels are designed for new marketers. This could be your venture into your first marketing qualification. It covers the key skills and knowledge you need to be a very good marketer at an operational level. Then there's a level six, which also has two pathways. There's a diploma in professional marketing and, dipl and a diploma in professional digital marketing. Qualifications at level six are designed to be more strategic. These qualifications are designed to make you a better decision maker, a better strategist, a better manager. So this is good if you are already in a management position or you're working towards a management position in marketing. And finally, there are also level seven qualifications and these are for really experienced marketers. You may be working in leadership positions. One of the things that I want to point out here is within each of these qualifications, there are modules and then modules can be taken individually, which also lead to a qualification. So this is a powerful way of dipping in and out of different modules. They may cover very specific knowledge gaps. Some good examples of this is if you want to do the digital marketing modules, there's modules in digital marketing at all the different levels. This is a great fit because you may have a very specific scenario, a, a very specific skills gap that you're trying to address. You may have a few challenges ahead which will require you to do things which are more specialist. So there's quite a lot of flexibility going in between levels and working across levels. So I'm just going to walk you through a level six just to give you an example of what I've just been explaining there. So let's have a look at the level six diploma in professional marketing. So to get the qualification, you're looking to complete three modules. There are two mandatory modules, and then you've got the option of choosing electives. So in this scenario, you've got the diploma in professional marketing. You do the first two modules, and then you've got a choice of selecting the three modules available on this page. On the same level, there is an alternative pathway. So you could do the level six diploma in professional digital marketing. So in this case, you would still do the same first module, which is a shared module across both level six qualifications, marketing and digital strategy. And then you would do another two digital modules and that would give you the diploma in professional marketing. For those of you that want to get the best of both qualifications, it's actually possible to do four modules across both qualifications and actually come out with two qualifications. So you could come out with both the diploma in professional marketing and the diploma in professional digital marketing, which you can put on your CV. To do this, you would do the modules that are highlighted in blue here. And as mentioned earlier, you might be in a situation where you have little time and you don't want to commit to a full qualification, or you may have a specific knowledge gap or a specific need. So this lends itself to doing individual modules. And these modules are still qualifications, they're called awards. And we get many candidates going for these options because they're bite size, they're a bit quicker and you can do them in less time. So for example, if you decided to do the marketing and digital strategy module on its own, you would still come out with a qualification, an official qualification from the Chartered Institute of Marketing and that qualification will be called an award in marketing and digital strategy. 
So on this slide, I wanted to just give you a quick insight into how these qualifications are assessed. So depending on which level it is, there's a mix of written reports and exams. So at level three and level four, typically you would see one of the modules being assessed by an examination. And level six and above is assessed through written reports. So these assessments are work-based. So different to doing a typical academic qualification, this is about taking all the knowledge that you've learned and applying it to the organization you work for or a chosen organization. This is a real chance to apply what you're learning. As well as the reports being based on a chosen organization, the assignments briefs usually contain a series of tasks. These tasks are based on the syllabus and also based on selected themes and scenarios. There's now a series of these themes that you can choose and it's likely that you'll find something that is relevant to your industry and the organization that you work for. The marking system works in grade format and the pass mark, which is grade C, is set at 50%. There are several points in the year where you would work towards handing in your assessments or well, there's certain points in the year where you would sit exams. These three points are well spread throughout the year, so you have some flexibility in deciding which assessment boards to submit your work towards. If you don't make the pass mark, there will be opportunities for you to do resets. And also, if you've just missed the pass mark, there are opportunities for you to work on the same piece of work on the same report and resubmit that report. For some, it may be convenient to rework the, the areas of weakness and resubmit the report. There is lots and lots of support available to you around assessments. So there's an entire area on a website designed by the CIM to give you all the relevant resources the guides, detailed assignment briefs, PowerPoint presentations explaining the assignment briefs, as well as lots of support available from the study centre that you sign up with. You will be well supported in your journey to tackle these assessments. Some of you might be completely new to studying a CIM qualification, so let me walk you through the journey. The first bit of the journey is for you to figure out which is the right qualification for you. And it's good to have this discussion with the CIM or an accredited study centre. An accredited study centre could be a college, a university or a private training provider. And these centres have been selected by the Chartered Institute of Marketing. They hold high standards of delivery and they have been validated. And there's a good number of them, so there's lots of options for you to choose from. For those of you that can't quite work out which level is right for you, there are diagnostic tests available where you can answer a series of questions and it will advise you on which is the best level for you. The next step is to select a start date apply and enroll and make your payment. I'm going to cover costs and payments on the next slide. In terms of start dates, different centers will be running different start dates. So have this discussion when you've shortlisted the centers that you potentially want to study with and ask this as one of the questions. To study for a CIM qualification, you need to become a CIM member. So early in your journey, when you start your learning, when you enroll, at some point you will become a CIM member. There's many benefits that come with this and you will receive advice from your study centre on how to get this membership in place. The next stage is to get deep into your learning and work towards submitting your assessments. 
And as mentioned, there's various points in the year where you can submit your work to the Chartered Institute of Marketing via your study centre for marking. If you're doing a full qualification, which usually has three different modules, different centres will work differently in how these modules will be spread throughout the year. For those of you who have got more time on your hands, you may want to study the modules more intensively and in a shorter time scale. For those of you who are really busy, you may want to spread the learning out across a longer period of time. The way these exam boards are spread gives you the options to be a bit more flexible. So the aim is to complete all of your assessments, pass all your assessments. The CIM will inform you of the grades that you've achieved. And then at the end, you will get an official certificate sent to you from the CIM and you can celebrate. For those of you studying for level six qualifications and above, there is a graduation ceremony. It's a prestigious event. You can bring your family and you can go up on stage to receive your qualification. So finally, I just want to give you an insight into the framework of how the costing of a CIM qualification works. There are three elements to the cost. The first one is course fees, and this is paid to the accredited study centre that you choose. This cost varies from centre to centre. This cost covers all the tutor support, all the materials, and all the support to help you in your assessment. There is a range of prices here. So some of the questions that you'd have to ask the different study centres will be related to what is the package that you're going to get. The second part of the cost is to become a CIM member, which I've already mentioned. And this membership brings many benefits. And this cost is for an annual period. So it lasts one year. If your qualification runs over that one year period, then you'd have to renew this membership to continue studying. And then the last cost is assessment fees for each module that you're studying. So if you're just studying an award, then you just pay the assessment fee for that one module. If you're doing the full qualification, it's this assessment fee multiplied by three because there's three modules on each qualification. In terms of payment for this qualification, that's a discussion that you should have with your study center. If your company is paying for the qualification, then your study centre should arrange an invoice to your centre so you can enrol and get an invoice raised. If you're paying for the qualification yourself, I think most centres have an online facility where you can enrol and pay online. Some centres may also have payment plans which are spread out to make the financing of this qualification a bit easier for you. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you for taking the time out and sticking with me and listening to this presentation. I hope this has been of benefit to you. I hope you've picked up some things that you can take away and take action on. As mentioned before, feel free to get in touch with me. Feel free to connect to me. My purpose and passion is to help marketers succeed. If you need advice, drop me a message. There are challenging times ahead for marketers. and There are also times of opportunity. I am 100% confident that you will take the actions required to succeed, to improve your knowledge, improve your CV, improve your confidence and gain the lifestyle you deserve. This is Imran signing out.